Welcome to the BOTUS podcast. I am Jacek from BOTUS and today I am here with my colleague Dr. Sascha Böhm. Um, as some of our listeners may recall, we already did a podcast together with my colleague Sascha. That podcast was on the topic of Cerebone, so we were talking about that biomaterial. Today's podcast will be on the topic of Permamem, and actually my colleague Sasha is the product manager for this biomaterial, Permamem, so he knows basically everything uh, about this uh, membrane that we'll be talking about. So uh, yeah, welcome Sasha. welcome to the BOTUS podcast. Hello Jacek, thank you. Um, I'm very happy to be here with you again, and I'm looking forward to this interview. Yeah, it's, it's always a pleasure to have you here, Sasha. So thank you for, for having taken the time. So uh, yeah, Sasha, as already mentioned, you are the, the product manager for Permamem. And um, Permamem is the latest or the newest product in the BOTUS portfolio. Um, so what were the reasons for launching this, this product? Yes, Jacek, that's true. Uh, Permamem was... Um introduced in 2017 this is so it's it's really the latest member of the botis product portfolio and actually introducing permamem um, nicely mirrors the uh, 360 degree approach of botis which aims to uh, provide the optimal solution uh, out of many options in in almost all clinical situations permamem is a synthetic membrane and uh, with this material, or with this device, we, we are able to provide an alternative in all situations uh, where the use of a collagen membrane may be limited due to different reasons. Uh, many, I think most of the users uh, knows, know that the BOTIS is active worldwide and in some regions, in some countries, um, Collagen membranes uh, are not used, or it is even not allowed to be used, specifically when we think about porcine derived materials. And in these uh, situations, uh, with Permamem, we can provide an alternative to the collagen membranes, to JSON membrane, to Colprotect membrane. And in addition, um, with Permamem, we complete our synthetic portfolio if you want to say so because with max resorb we already have a nice uh, biomaterial which is totally synthetic it is a bone grafting material uh, a biphasic um, calcium phosphate and together with permamem we actually can provide a fully synthetic solution and i think this is also quite nice not every i would say not every uh, company in the biomaterials field has this uh, opportunity and this um, this option. And last, um, with Permamem, as a synthetic membrane, we actually avoid dietary ton conflicts. Um, when we think of, of many people that uh, pursue a vegetarian or vegan lifestyle. Okay, so uh, you've already mentioned it several times that, that Permamem is a synthetic bar barrier membrane. So um, what exactly it is made out of? Well, uh, Permamem is made of polytetrafluoroethylene, short PTFE, which is actually a well-known and well-established material in medicine and also in regenerative dentistry. Um, actually, I think most of the listeners may know that um, membranes made out of PDFE were the first ones used in uh, such concepts like guided tissue regeneration in the early 80s, long before collagen membranes were introduced. However, the PDFE uh, of Permamem is quite unique. It has some specific features. I think we will talk later about this. Um, what I want to stress at this point is that the PDFE used for Permamem is a high density PDFE, which means it is non-porous. And uh, this is a quite interesting feature, feature um, which, which is uh, different from other barrier membranes, from other PDFE membranes we find on the dental market. 
So you mentioned this. Uh, this is quite interesting, I think, that since uh, PTFE membranes were developed and launched several decades ago, there have been a lot of technical advances also. And the membrane permamem that we are talking about now, it's, it's highly dense uh, and non-porous. Non so um, what does it mean, highly dense? What, what, is, what advantages does it have? Oh, yeah, it has uh, several um, benefits. Uh, highly dense material means uh, low porous or, um, or no porous. On the other hand, for permanent PDFE, we can say it is non-porous. So in a first, uh, first of all, it, it is, uh, it's a material which is not penetrable by uh, bacteria. And I think every clinician who has worked with PDFE membranes before was faced the situation what to do in case of a flap dehiscence, what to do if the membrane gets exposed. And for Permamum, um, I would say if it gets exposed, you don't need to worry because this membrane protects the underlying bone from being infected. Actually, this is a very good point because whenever personally I talk about this membrane at, at congresses, for example, this is an important point that comes up whether or not it can be exposed. Yeah. Yes, indeed. And in addition, um, the membrane then not necessarily has to be removed immediately. I mean, we know from the early PDFE membranes, uh, from the expanded versions, that those kind of devices had to be removed, removed immediately, otherwise you, you risked an infection. Second, what is also an advantage of this high density characteristic is that we, of course, on the other hand, can do intentional open healing. So we can leave this membrane purposely exposed to the oral cavity, like for alveolar socket or ridge preservation, which is a, a beautiful indication of this membrane. Um, we can just seal the socket, we stabilize the blood coagulum, and at the same time we protect this side from outside influences of the oral cavity. And furthermore, we do not have to um, manipulate the soft tissue in this uh, situation, because we don't have to raise a flap to cover the, the augmented side or the membrane. So that's a beautiful, um, a, a beautiful indication for permamem. And I would like to stress here that this was recently published by two independent groups in a prospective cohort study and in a retrospective study, which nicely illustrated um, the efficacy of permamem in this indication. Okay, so we have a very yeah, innovative synthetic membrane, which is very, very dense, which is impervious to bacteria. Um, what other characteristic does it have? A uh, permamem has uh, 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 many um, unique properties. Uh, first of all, uh, this membrane is extremely thin, so it's below one it's below 0.1 millimeter, so it's a very thin PDFE membrane, and this is obviously very advantageous uh, if you deal with soft tissue, if you deal with thin soft tissue. Second, um, the membrane exhibits an extraordinary tear resistance, uh, and, and this is very beneficial when you think of, um, of a fixation of the membrane, of cutting of the membrane. So it's perfectly clinically manageable, this device. Third, I would say um, another um, advantage of Permamem is that the membrane is rather smooth. So if this membrane is exposed to the oral carotene, no matter if it's uh, it was purposely open healing or if it gets a second uh, a secondary a secondary exposure, uh, we do see low to zero um, bacterial biofilm formation on this membrane. So almost no contamination of the surgical area. And I think this is also quite nice when you work with such a device. And last not least, uh, another, uh, would say, really uh, e extraordinary um, um, property of this membrane is that it is colored, uh, it is blue. Um, and I think it helps to, uh, to remove, it helps to 
locate the membrane during removal. And on the other hand, we can also easily distinguish this device from uh, resorbable membranes, which are usually whitish. You just mentioned uh, an interesting point, which is the, the removal of the membrane. So uh, it is a synthetic membrane which needs to be removed. Is that correct? That's true. It's a non-resorbable membrane and it has to be uh, removed at a certain uh, time point. And how much time are we talking about? Um, actually, Perpamem is intended for continuous long-term use. So the removal uh, basically depends on the kind of application and, and in the indication, I would say, if you treat um, quickly regenerating sites like the alveolar socket, you may remove this membrane only after three to four weeks. If we talk about the open healing specifically, you can just uh, use tweezers and remove this uh, membrane from, from the site uh, after a very short uh, time. And the alveolar socket will quickly heal. You will get a uh, a, a immature bone and then an immature bone in a in a, a very sh very short and quick time, and um, if we talk about bigger defects, even vertical uh, guided bone regeneration, I would recommend to leave the membrane longer in C2, and then this device can even be removed at four to six months, depending on the bone grafting material used, which obviously. Um, uh, it differs from the healing time and also it depends on the dimension of the bone defect. Okay, so the removal time, it depends on the indication that we're talking about and it also depends on the sort of bone grafting material that we are using, if I understand correctly. Um, one point that's quite strong, I think, you mentioned it before, is, is, the, yeah, is the thickness of the membrane. So it's 0 0.1 millimeters, which as to my knowledge, it's the thinnest uh, membrane that exists in the world. Is that true? I would agree. Uh, I also uh, took a closer look what is on the market specifically. What do we have uh, on, on PDAV membranes in the dental field available? And yeah, to, to, to my knowledge, it is uh, the thinnest um, non-resorbable membrane I, I, I did find and I do know. Mm -hmm. And um, one question that I think is uh, very of very high interest to our listeners um, is in, in which indications can it be actually used? You already mentioned some, but maybe you can give us a, a whole picture. Yeah, Permamem um, is an ideal tool for all concepts of GBR and GTR. We can use this membrane uh, in rich augmentation procedures for um, later placement of dental, dental implants. We can perform simultaneous GBR and dental implant placement. We can treat the alveolar socket, as I outlined before. Fenestration and dehesion defect treatment is also an indication of permanent. And we can even uh, regenerate sites uh, around natural teeth, talking about perio uh, defects if one likes to use a non-resorbable membrane in this indication. Okay, so it's a really very versatile product that can be used in, in many different indications. Now, from my experience, uh, from talking to different clinicians at congresses, at courses, I have the feeling that there are two different philosophies, that there, are, there is a majority of doctors who generally prefer to use um, collagen membranes and there is a certain philosophy that certain doctors adhere who really believe in, in synthetic membranes. Now from your scientific point of view, because you, you're also a biologist, um, when it comes to permamem, are there any indication where you would uh, recommend the use of a synthetic membrane such as permamem over the use of a collagen membrane? Um, yes, yes, that's a very good question. And uh, of course, this is something w which we thought about before, before launching Permamem. And uh, coming back to your first question, why did we introduce a Permamem? Of course, it is on one side, it's the synthetic character, uh, which, we, which we hadn't before, just a porcine membranes. We would like to have, or we would like to provide an alternative uh, to the dental community. However, um, also from the 
indication side or from the application side, I do see uh, reasons on the rationale having such a membrane in the portfolio. I stressed before the um, treatment of extraction sites and if one looks for a very simple approach to treat those sites, I would recommend permanum here because you can leave the membrane exposed to the oral cavity, which is usually not indicated for collagen membranes since they are rapidly degraded by bacterial enzymes. So this is a nice approach. Uh, it's also a, not a very sensitive, technique sensitive approach because you do not have to raise big flaps. Of course, it depends on the dimension of the, of, of, of the, of the socket um, bone wool defects, but in general, you do not have to raise a big flap and you just um, put the membrane in subperiostal pockets and leave this site exposed. And second, I also see an indication or in, in uh, if we go for larger augmentations, Permamem has a certain form stability and this is definitely higher than a collagen membrane. Um, and here I do see advantages if we go outside, if we regenerate outside the bony envelope, the natural rich contour, we can provide more stability, we can provide actually uh, the chance to regenerate more millimeters. And also want to stress here, this membrane is perfectly suited to be used, for instance, uh, with um, some eight devices like tenting screws or anything like this. So you can have even more millimeters to regenerate. Mm -hmm. Now, when we're talking about bone regeneration in general, the topic of micro movement and immobilization is, is, is quite important. So uh, when we have a grafting site and we, we basically need to avoid micro movement, I think you can confirm this from a biological point of view. Now, the question I'm aiming at is, does, does this membrane need to be fixated? A and yes, how? I totally agree, Jacek. Um, regeneration is based on the forming blood coagulum and uh, this needs a certain time for healing and for maturation. And it is, uh, of course, the optimal way if it is this is an undisturbed healing and we would like to avoid any pressure, any movement, any loading. So um, from the collagen membranes, we actually know that um, that it can be fixated or it can also be just placed over the bone grafting material. These membranes specifically when they are wet uh, adapt really uh, nicely to the bone. For permamem, of course, this membrane doesn't soak liquids and adaption, we need to push a bit. So coming back to your question, I would say it is very important, I would say it is crucial to immobilize this membrane at the side. And as I stressed before, this nice properties, this nice material properties, we can use any fixation device to you to, to immobilize the membrane at the augmented side. You can pin the membrane, of course, you can screw it, or you can even suture it. I would like to say that uh, many users passively suture the membrane if they place it over an alveolar socket and leave it exposed. If they perform submerged healing, we mostly see that this membrane is tacked or is even screwed to be uh, adapted to the recipient side. Okay, so there are different ways to, to fix it, this membrane. Okay, good. Well, Thank you very much, Sasha. Thank you for having taken the time to, yeah, to do this podcast. Um, for all of our listeners, um, we're going to put on the website uh, two very interesting links that, that might be of interest for you. So the first one is uh, Botus Campus, uh, and there in particular the site of Permamem. So there you will find lots of different clinical cases and also some webinars and other informations on the use of Permamem. And another website that I can very strongly recommend is the Indication Matrix. You're also going to find a link to the Indication Matrix below on this website. And there on the Indication Matrix also you find lots of different clinical cases on the use of Permamen in various indications. So again, Sasha, thank you very much for having participated. Thank you, Jacek. It was a pleasure and thank you all for listening. Yeah, thank you to our listeners for yeah, for having listened to the podcast and stay tuned. Mm -hmm.